This is how to start a podcast on YouTube. We'll show you the easiest way to get started on YouTube podcasts, covering everything from podcast setup all the way to upload, so you can make the most of video podcasting on YouTube. Adding your podcast to YouTube is actually so simple. The whole process is only four steps and happens on a single screen. But before we do that, I'm gonna walk through planning your podcast, how to name it, how to describe it, and more. Then we'll talk about the gear you need, and it might be gear you already have laying around. Finally, we'll walk through how to plan, record, edit, and publish your first episodes. And if you've already got some of this figured out, use the chapters down below to jump ahead to any section when you're ready. And once your podcast is on YouTube, there's one more step you're gonna to wanna to take, and without it, you you could be missing out on 90% of your potential audience, all right? So stay till the end and we'll make sure to cover that before we wrap up. As a host of two professional podcasts and a consultant for many others, I often get asked, what do you need to get a podcast on YouTube? And you're gonna need a title, a description, and then a thumbnail, although not a thumbnail in the way we think about them on YouTube, it's actually slightly different for a podcast on YouTube. And it's really good to figure this stuff out before you start thinking about gear or anything else that you might need. So the first essential step for any podcast is to think about who is your audience? Who do you want to listen to your show after it gets published? One of the best things about podcasts is you can reach really small niche audiences that aren't being served by mass media. So figure out exactly who they are and what you're gonna talk about with them. Next, you need a title for your podcast. What are you gonna call it? The best advice I can give you is to not overthink it. And that's coming from somebody who overthinks almost everything. However, there are some key things you wanna consider when titling your podcast. First, make it easy to pronounce and spell. So sometimes people will be listening to your podcast, even if it's on YouTube without looking at the screen. And if you send them somewhere for something related to the podcast, or later they tell a friend about the podcast and they wanna search for it, you wanna make sure you don't have any cutesy, clever spelling or anything that's really difficult to spell. So this is one of those cases where simple is really important. You also want it to be unique. Don't choose the exact same podcast title that tons of other podcasts out there already have. Look for something that nobody is using. This again is gonna be really important if somebody recommends your podcast and the person who gets the recommendation can't find it in search because they don't know which show they were actually talking about. According to Spotify, the average podcast title on their hosting service is three to four words or about 15 to 20 characters. Short names are easier to remember and recommend. So that's a really good reason to keep it tight and the podcast does not have to have the or podcast in the title. My main podcast is actually called The Six Ways. And part of the reason I named it that was because thesixways.com was the domain that was actually available. So that's another thing to check and see is if you can get the domain that matches your podcast. Now, if you're struggling with names, don't be afraid to use an AI tool like ChatGPT to give you some ideas. Next, you'll need to write a description or a summary as it's called on some platforms. You know how if you go to Netflix and a movie pops up, you'll read the description there to see whether or not you wanna watch it. This is the same thing for your podcast. Help people decide whether or not the podcast might be something they are interested in or not. Think about what your ideal audience member might search for on YouTube or in a podcasting app and include those words or phrases in your description, especially if they're not in the title of the podcast. For example, my podcast is for entrepreneurs, but that is not in the title. So my description absolutely talks about entrepreneurship. Next, make sure to include who the podcast is for, so who the audience is, why they should listen, and what they'll get by listening. And if applicable, you wanna make sure to talk about why you are qualified to be the host of that podcast. Now, you do not have to be an expert to be a host of a podcast. You could just be really passionate about the topic. So don't feel like you have to have a PhD in whatever it might be in order to host the podcast. But any authority or credibility you do have should be included in your description. Now for the writers, YouTube will give you up to 5,000 characters that you can use for your podcast description, but you want it to be short enough so somebody will take the time to read it. A lot of times three to four sentences is all you need, but you could have a couple of short paragraphs if you had important things to say. And the last thing you need to get your podcast going is your cover art or thumbnail if you wanna call it that. Now here on YouTube, thumbnails are these wide rectangles, right? But for a podcast, it's actually square. Generally, they're designed at 3000 by 3000 pixels, although the minimum is 1400 by 1400. But I always err on the side of too big because you just want the resolution to be as high as possible everywhere you go. Now, important thing to remember about your thumbnail, it should have the title on it and then maybe one image, but not too much else. In search results, especially on a mobile phone, the thumbnail is going to show up very, very small. 
And so it will have zero impact at all if you can't even see what it is. So if you wanna get an idea for this, open the YouTube app, search for podcasts, and just look and see what the thumbnails look like on the side, and you'll know how tiny this thumbnail will actually show up. Tools like Canva have templates as a starting point for creating your podcast cover design, so you don't necessarily have to hire a graphic designer to do it. In fact, as of this recording, when I looked, Canva had over a thousand different podcast cover art templates to choose from. All right, we know what your podcast is gonna be, what the cover art's gonna look like. Let's talk about gear. If you've already got a computer to record your podcast onto, then you're only gonna need two essential pieces of gear. First, a microphone. Audio quality for podcasts is really important because it's important that they can obviously hear what you have to say, but also if your audio is echoey or muddy or too quiet, people will not sit through that. There's so much content out in the world now, they'll just go find something else to listen to or watch. Now we've put together a video of our top three podcast microphones for beginners linked up on the screen right now or in the description of this video if you're looking for a recommendation. The second thing you'll need is of course a camera. Now the easiest thing to do is use a webcam that you already have. Now if you have a computer with a built-in webcam, those tend to not be very good. So unless you happen to have the one computer in the world with a really high quality webcam, I do recommend using something external. Uh, all it has to do is have at least 1080p resolution. I have been using this Logitech C920 for I don't know how many years that I use for my podcast among other things. So it doesn't have to be fancy or high tech. The best part about using a webcam that's already connected to your computer is when you're done recording your podcast, the files are already there. You don't have to transfer them over or anything like that. Now you will need software to record into, and we will talk about that here momentarily. Another option would be to use the camera that's built into your smartphone to record to that. In fact, if you can connect it directly to your computer, you can still record directly to your hard drive. But even if you can't, you can still record directly to the phone. Either way, make sure to turn on Do Not Disturb so your recording doesn't get interrupted. One thing you will definitely need though, is a way to mount your tripod or mount your phone onto a tripod or something. Because already, just in this short period of time, I may be out of shape, but my arm is getting really tired holding my phone up. So you're not gonna wanna do it for a 15 to 30 minute podcast episode. One important note, if you are recording, let's say the video to your phone and the audio to your computer or some other device, you will have to sync up the audio and video later. With this you know, software that we have today, it's actually relatively easy to do, but it is an extra step. So if you can record both the audio and the video to the same source, that's always a better option to save time later on. Finally, if you have an external camera like a DSLR or some other kind of camera that you record video on that shoots at least 1080p, you can use that to record your podcast as well. Again, ideally your audio and your video are going to the same source. So if your camera is recording to your computer, try and record your audio to the same place. If your video is going right into the camera or on an SD card, then try and connect the microphone to the camera so you don't have to sync them up later on. Now, I told you all you really need, in addition to the computer to record on, is the camera and the microphone. However, you might want some lights. The beauty of having lights is you want a nice clear picture for people who are watching your podcast on YouTube. If it's a dark room and they can't see you anyway, it might as well be an audio podcast with no video. If you want a lighting recommendation, check the description below this video, but I also encourage you just to set up in front of a window. Natural daylight is often as good or even better than artificial lighting. You just have to make sure to time it out so that it's maybe on a nice overcast day so you get even light. You certainly can't record it late at night if you're using a window for light. Next, let's talk about the software that you'll need. The good news is software has gotten so easy to use and affordable and in some cases free that it's really easy to get started. If you are recording a solo podcast, so just one person talking into the microphone and the camera, then we love recording right into Descript. Descript is great for editing as well, but you can record directly into Descript and when you're done, it's already there. And then if you're editing in Descript as well, you can use their incredible feature where you just edit the text or the transcript of what you said, and it will edit the audio and video to match. Of course, try the free version of Descript first to see if you like it. Now, if you're planning to have more than one person on the podcast, either because you're gonna be interviewing guests or you have a co-host and they are in a different location than you, then you're gonna want special software that'll actually record the audio and the video on both ends. So for example, if you were my co-host and I was here and you were wherever you record, you could use a tool that would record your video and audio to your local hard drive. Mine would record my video and audio to my local hard drive and then they'd both get synced up in the cloud. 
The reason this is so amazing is because otherwise, if you're just recording traditionally, like with a Zoom call, and I was recording on my end, your video and audio would get compressed, perhaps distorted or glitched, depending on how strong your internet signal was, how fast it was, and how often it might've buffered or dropped out. So if you're recording remotely with somebody else for the highest quality recording, we recommend using a tool like StreamYard, Riverside.fm, or Descript actually now includes Squadcast, which does the same thing. So lots of options there. We'll link to all of them down below. All right, let's talk about editing your podcast. If you have an editing tool that you already love for video, by all means, use that. No need to learn anything new. But if you don't, I can't recommend the Descript slash Squadcast combo enough. Not only can you do the remote recording, but I edit all of my podcast in Descript and it's super fast, has all the tools I need. So we've planned out your podcast. We've looked at gear that you'll need and then maybe some that you'll want. Now let's talk about how to plan your actual episode so that you have a show that people can't wait to listen to or watch. Plus the way I like to do it cuts way down on editing time. My first recommendation before you record a single second is brainstorm 20 episode ideas for your new show. Now I say this with nothing but love, but a successful podcast could easily go over a hundred episodes. And if you can't come up with 20 episode ideas before you start, you're gonna have a hard time making it to 100. Don't worry about using AI or chat GPT or something to cheat and help you get some other ideas. In fact, it's not cheating. I strongly encourage you to do that. You just wanna know that you're gonna have plenty to talk about before you get started. Now in a perfect world, your episode ideas and titles will be topics or questions that people are searching for. So we encourage you to use websites like answerthepublic.com or a tool like TubeBuddy that we love for researching what you're going to talk about as well as what you're going to title the episodes. Because if your episode can get picked up in search and then come up high in the rankings on YouTube or in Google, you're gonna get way more eyeballs and ears on your episodes. And before you actually announce that your podcast is live anywhere, I strongly encourage you to have at least three episodes uploaded and ready to go. This achieves two things. The first one is, it'll give you an idea of how the episode will flow around a few different topics. Sometimes if you only record one and it goes fine, then you run into some sort of trouble with the second one. So three is a nice number, but more importantly two, you announce to the world, here's my new podcast. And they go there and there's one episode and the topic doesn't click with them, they're gone and they're not gonna come back next week when you ask again. But if they show up and there's three episodes and at least one of them sounds interesting to them, then they'll check it out. If they enjoy that, they'll listen to another one. And I always say that bingers are buyers, but binging applies to a lot of things. If you have three episodes out in your first week and somebody loves all three of them, they are gonna follow, they're gonna subscribe, and they're gonna tell their friends about it. One episode is often not enough to get somebody to fall in love with your podcast. So that's another great reason to have more than one on launch day. All right, now it's time to upload and publish your new podcast. Now, if you've already created a YouTube channel, you're ready for the next step. If you haven't, we've included a tutorial about how to create a YouTube channel in the description below this video. So we're gonna go to youtube.com to start, and I'm gonna click on my profile picture here on the upper right and click on YouTube Studio. As a shortcut, you can also go to studio.youtube.com. Then in the upper right corner, we're gonna click this Create button and then New Podcast. So in this pop-up, you've got a few options. At the bottom, you can submit an RSS feed. And what this does is if you have your podcast as an audio podcast on another host, you can have them automatically added to YouTube. However, this is not what we recommend because basically what it'll do is it'll put the audio from your podcast on YouTube with just a static image and no video, which is not a great YouTube experience. The middle option is to set an existing playlist as a podcast because podcasts on YouTube are playlists, but we're creating a new one. So we're gonna use this first option, create a new podcast. So I click on that. And again, here is the screen we showed you at the beginning with basically the four things that you need. First up is you're gonna need your title. So I'm just gonna use my podcast as an example. It's called The Six Ways with Jerry Potter. I'll drop that in there. You have up to 150 characters here to use for your title. Next up, you're going to paste your description that you wrote, or if you haven't written it yet, you can type it out as you're in here live. For a few tips on how to do that, make sure to go back to the beginning of this video where we told you exactly what should go inside of your description. Next is visibility. Do you want this to be public, private, or unlisted? Now, if you want this to be found, obviously you're gonna want it to be public. If it's not ready yet, you just wanna get it up and see what it looks like yourself, then you can certainly choose that private option. And then finally, your thumbnail. So a square picture that represents your podcast. So go ahead and add the cover art that you created. And there's mine. 
And so we're gonna hit that create button and publish it. So now here is the screen for the podcast, but of course there's no content here. So the next thing you would do is you would add videos. So if I click the blue button in the center here, it's gonna give me an option to choose existing videos or to upload new videos. If you've already got videos on your channel that you want to be part of your podcast, you'd of course choose that section, second option. But I wanna go through the upload new videos process just to show you the important settings for podcasts. Once your video uploads, you'll land on this screen here where we put in all of the details. So the first thing you're gonna put in is the title of your episode. By default, it will show what the name of your file was that you uploaded. So if you need to change it, you change it right here. Remember, this is where you wanna title it something that people are searching for if you have something that makes sense with the episode. Next is the description. So this is where you can enter up to 5,000 characters to tell people all about it. If you've ever heard about podcast show notes, this is where that would go. So you might wanna tell people about the episode, where they can get more information, links to information about your guest, anything else that would go in those spots. At a minimum, I would write two sentences so that the description at least gives somebody skimming the an idea of what the episode is going to be about. So again, you could add as much as you need there, including links and other things like that. Next up is the thumbnail. And after your video processes, you'll be able to choose a thumbnail based on a few things that YouTube recommends here. But the thumbnail is so important because it's what makes people decide whether or not they're going to click on the episode if it gets recommended to them on YouTube. So I always create a custom thumbnail. So I'll just grab that off my hard drive and upload it right there. Now notice earlier we talked about thumbnails for podcasts overall, those are squares, but these thumbnails are for the video part on YouTube for each episode and they are wide or landscape. Next below that, you're gonna choose the playlist. Now, again, on YouTube, podcasts are playlists. So you have to put it on a playlist, that's how YouTube knows it's part of your podcast. So by default, because we just created this podcast, it should be pre-selected here. But if I click this drop down, you'll see all the different playlists on my channel. And so you can see these ones here have a designated podcast. So this one that says the six ways, I think is actually my main podcast. This is the one we just created for this tutorial, but you get the idea. Now below, of course, YouTube videos have tons of other settings and we've got lots of videos here on the Primal Video channel about how to upload and optimize properly. A very popular thing to do in podcasts is to say, hey, if you like that episode, you might also like this episode. And so the way we can make that even better on YouTube is by using the end screen feature. So during the last Last 20 seconds of your podcast episode, you can actually recommend one or two other episodes and then actually have them linked up directly on the screen, which makes for a really great user experience. Then they can go right through and listen or watch on your next episode. Now there's one more important thing to know to make sure you don't miss out on 90% of your potential audience that I promised we'd cover. Right before we get to that though, I wanna show you how to share your podcast on YouTube so that you can promote it. So back here in YouTube Studio, I'm on the content tab here. And then up at the top, I'm gonna to click podcasts. You will not see this until you create your podcast, but once it's there, I can click on podcasts. Here is my main podcast, the public one. I can click these three dots here where it says options get shareable link, and that will copy the link to share the whole podcast wherever I want. Now back to the main content tab on the videos tab here. If I wanna share a specific episode, I find the episode that I wanna share. So let's find the one with Justin Brown from Primal Video. I click again the three dots, get shareable link. Same thing, it'll copy it to the clipboard. Uploading your podcast to YouTube the way we did today could be missing out on up to 90% of your potential audience because this is gonna put your podcast on YouTube, which is great, YouTube's gigantic, as well as in the YouTube music app, but it will not put it into Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or all the other popular podcast apps that people listen to audio podcasts on. So if you want that, you're going to need to also upload your podcast to a separate podcasting host. If you've already got one, you should be all set, but otherwise for maximum distribution, you'll want to find one of those. And we've included some links to help you with that down below in the description of this video. The world of podcasting is amazing and is only getting bigger. So to help you out, two more videos linked on screen you might find helpful. One is how to turn your YouTube videos into shorts and another one about how to edit into script, which is applicable for podcasts and videos. There's also a link to my channel if you want to join me over there and subscribe. I do all kinds of content around content marketing for entrepreneurs, including podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and more. And as always, there's a ton of resources in the description of this video down below. So check those out for more help and I'll see you in the next video.